guess what? We are outside a real life race venue. And you know what the best bit is? We are about to head inside to see the action unfold and we are bringing you guys along for the ride. Oh yes, we have come up to London to the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park for this Super League Triathlon Arena Games powered by Zwift for a full behind the scenes access. Well, Heather, what are we waiting outside in the cold for? The athletes are arriving. Let's go. See ya. <laughs> Okay, we've made it through the doors inside and you can see behind us the athletes are warming up, getting their kit ready and basically sussing out the venue because for many of them, it's going to be the first time that they've actually raced this format where the real world is combined with the virtual world. Yeah, now there has actually only been one previous rendition of this format and that took place in Rotterdam last August and trust us, there is nothing like it out there. We'll explain more on the format and the racing as we go on through that. Now, obviously, we are in the middle of a pandemic here, so COVID safety precautions are paramount. And of course, we've had to have a lateral flow test before we came in here, which I can say we both came in negative. So we're giving the all clear to come into the arena, but of course, we're gonna be remaining socially distanced from the athletes throughout the day. As you can see, there are some big names in ITU racing here today, and you might have spotted one or two top long course pros as well. I mean, we've got the likes of Lucy Charles Barkley and Tim Don, who are going to be testing their speed up against the likes of Georgia Taylor Brown and Johnny Brownlee, to name a few. We've also got a first for Super League Triathlon with para triathletes competing in this edition of the Arena Games. You'll see the British stars such as Lauren Stedman, Claire Cashmore, George Peasgood and Dave Ellis, as well as reigning Olympic champion Jetsa Platz. Whilst the athletes are warming up and testing their equipment, we're going to try and grab a few words. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's completely different, obviously, to anything I've done before this format of racing. So I know it's going to be short, it's going to be fast, it's going to be painful. There's not going to be any margin for error. So no transition mistakes, no getting the order wrong. I've got to do it all right. So I just think it's going to be a lot of fun and the brain's going to have to concentrate whilst the heart rate is at max. Uh, I'm really excited, especially now it's race day, I'm here, I've seen what it's all going to be like. Uh, I watched a bit of the races before me as well, the para races, and yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. Really. It's very short, sharp, fast racing, so I feel there's not enough time to realise how much pain you're in. Um, so hopefully that's a good thing, and yeah, I'm excited to get going now. It sounds cliche, doesn't it, but I am really excited to race. I've not raced for 18 months, so yeah, I'm going to take this opportunity and yeah hopefully put some of the training into practice and uh, have a good race i'm feeling really good um in myself you know I've, I've, I've prepared as best i can for this not new but something i haven't done for such a long time but i'm under no illusion what i'm up against <laughs> i'm hoping that this race is gonna suit me my training's been going well i've uh, not raced for a long long time now uh i swim a lot in a pool obviously i think i'm a slightly better open water swimmer than i am a pool swimmer uh, but I like to think in this race, I'll get better as it goes on. So the first one, some of the guys like, like Gordon, my training partner, has got a lot more punch of that first 200 meters. But then hopefully he tires quicker than me. And then by the end, I come through stronger. I mean, leading into Miami, it was obviously a shorter distance than I've done before. So I was doing quite a lot of high intensity training for that. So I was thinking about Super League coming up after, but sort of in the last two weeks, I've done some shorter sessions, a lot of really hard intervals in the pool, and then some short bike to run, swapping around sessions. So I feel like I'm as kind of ready as I can be, I guess. I've changed a few things for the Super League games. Um, first, I've run on a curved treadmill because it's very different to an outside. You basically have to run like a sprinter, you want to drive your knees forward and uh, run differently. So I've been fortunate to be able to go on a curved treadmill three or four times and do a couple of mini sessions on that. Um, obviously Zwift is something that I've done a lot during lockdown, like a lot of people, so that's okay. And then the swim training, I've um, tried to work on that first 200 meters uh, and getting out a bit faster, which should help, me, should help me in the other racing. I think for me, it's just the, it sounds silly, but the speed at which everything happens, you know, like when you kind of race an Olympic, you've got time to think, you've got time to, you know, process what the next stage is. Whereas here, you know, you're kind of talking like minutes per stage and you don't have a long run into transition. So you've got to like kind of think, you know, while you're still doing the swim about what you're going to be doing on the next leg or, or whatever the next um, bit is. So yeah, it's going to be difficult to just kind of like 
yeah think and be able to process the next step and make sure that you get everything nailed and you know kind of where you're leaving each each bit of you know hats goggles shoes and stuff so just if i can keep my head head cool then hopefully we'll be all right so our top three in the girls make sure that no one's listening uh is i think lucy charles will, will win because i think her swimming background um will help and then i think sophie caldwell will be second because she's a credible swimmer as well and we're good at the short distance and I think Georgia will be third. I think you'd be wrong to discount uh, Georgia Taylor-Brown. I think Sophie Coldwell is a dark horse as well and I'd love to say I could mix it in the podium so I'm going to back myself. <laughs> Sophie, Lucy... Uh, oh no, Sophie, Lucy, Kate Waugh and then men's I'd say... Oh, I don't... Alex Yee, Tim Dawn and... Oh, we have at Bowden. So honestly, I think uh, just this knee slag is going to be hard to beat because watching it back, his swim's really good as he gets tired um, and he's tactically really good as well. So I think he'll win. Um, and then I think it could be Vasco in second. And I'd like to think maybe I could sneak on the podium in third. You know, I think a dark horse, I know he's a late entry, is Gordon Benson. He's a powerful athlete. He seems to be in good shape. Alex Yee is the polar opposite in terms of, um, you know, He's a young up and coming guy. I've seen him train in the pool. He swims very well. And then don't discount the Germans because they've won, won in this, this event before. Alex Yee, Martin Van Riel and Vasco. Right, the athletes have done their warm up. They've tested out their kit and they've sorted their race plans. They've now headed back to the hotel to put their feet up, which gives us a bit of time to take a closer look at the kit and walk you through the racing format. So it's a 200 metre swim, a 4K bike and a 1K run, all in different orders. And the swim part is pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to demo that one. It's going to be four lengths of this Olympic pool. Each athlete will have a lane to themselves, so there's no drafting. However, when it comes to the bike and the run, that's where it gets a little more technical. Well, both will be on the virtual world of Zwift on the Crit City course. Now, as you can see, the treadmills next to me, these are the self-powered curved treadmills. But for the bike, the athletes will have their own bikes set up on the Tax Neo 2T trainers. And talking of which, I think Mark is catching up with an expert to give us a few more details. Okay, so I've actually brought in Van Gerlis here from Garmin Tax because, well, we've got quite an operation here. So how many turbo trainers have we got on the floor here? So we've got 10 Tax Neo 2Ts on the floor. Yeah, and I mean, that in itself is probably quite a logistical nightmare because you've got so many athletes coming in with different bikes, different setups. So you do spend quite a long time getting it all arranged and set There's up. There's quite a lot of logistical work behind the scenes, making sure that we know exactly what bikes are going to be on the floor. Um, so we have to make sure every, everything is set up in regards to all the little bits that fit onto the trainer itself, so yeah. definitely. So what does that involve? like? disc brakes, 10 yeah. speed, 11 speed, 12 One. speed, 13 speed. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, so we want to get all the information from them and then we have to make sure that um, all the spaces are set up on the trainers and the right cassettes are on the trainers for sure, so um, all the information has to be on there. Yeah, 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 brilliant. And in terms of calibration? Yeah, so with the Tax Neo 2Ts, there is no calibration, ah, so it's easy. all automatic, um, so there's no work ha has to go in there. So nice one. And then, I mean, the, the bit that kind of blows my mind is the fact that you're having to link up all these sensors and you've got the guys using Garmin heart rate monitors, Garmin watches to be able to transmit those signals. I mean, that must be a nightmare getting that all linked up one by one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, what we've done behind the scenes is we've got all the watches and all the kit set up. Um, the key thing was to have the Tax Neo 2Ts with the iPads because, um, of course, the iPads are separate. Um, so, but that's been done before, so um, that's going to be all, all good to go on the day, so, yep. Brilliant. Okay, now the bit that Mark and I have been dying to try out, the curved self-powered treadmills. Now, at first glance, if you haven't seen these before, they look pretty much like a standard treadmill just with a little bit of a curve. However, have a run on one and you'll notice they feel very different. And that's why the athletes have mentioned them quite a lot and have been really keen to get on them and give them a try ahead of racing. Now you probably notice there aren't really any buttons on this treadmill. The belt isn't a motorised belt as you get on most treadmills. I myself as a runner, I'm actually having to power the movement of the belt, which actually suits itself really well to this sort of format of racing because the athlete's going to come out, they want to get up to speed really quickly and not faffing around with buttons. But also the shortness of the race, obviously really getting that speed up and going really hard. 
The treadmill speed is actually sent to Zwift via the Zwift run sensor that's based on the side there. But also, as we've sort of found from the pros they've been reporting, it requires a slight change of technique. So just moving forward slightly on the treadmill just to get it up to speed and then drifting back to slow it down. But as a lot of them have been reporting, it does feel a little bit harder. I must say though, this is one of the easier ones I've been on. So it'd be interesting to see how they get on. All right, that's the equipment covered. So now it's probably time to take a closer look at how the actual racing is going to play out itself. So the para athletes will go first and they've got a 300 meter swim, a 10K bike and a 2K run in that order. And that's shortly followed by the able-bodied athletes who are actually going to be completing three series of races back to back. We've covered the distance already. Each time the, the format is different, it's a different order, never swim, bike, run, just to keep them on their toes. And it's going to be a point system. So the first athlete is going to get 10 points. The one who finishes 10th will get one point. And obviously there's three options, but times aren't counting. So tactics are going to be involved. Well, talking of tactics, as you alluded to already, the format and the order of these disciplines changes up each time around. So it makes it really, really exciting. So first off, the athletes will be doing swim, run, bike. And then the second round, it will be run, bike, swim, and then finishing off with bike, swim, run. Well, I think that's enough of us talking. The athletes are almost ready. So it's time for us to take a seat, sit back and enjoy the action. But whilst the para-athletes are getting ready to race, we have just been given access to a rather exciting behind-the-scenes area. Guys, this is so cool. We are doing a proper behind-the-scenes here. We are underground. We're under the swimming pool, more or less. Yeah, it feels like I can hardly get my breath because in a moment when we get round here, you can see the full view underneath the pool. And yeah, it's pretty special. Like these lane ropes, it's all just quite crazy. Yeah, so we're going to see the athletes coming towards us any moment now. On your marks. Oh, this is so cool. the paratriathlon racing and the medal ceremonies concluded so we headed back down to poolside to grab a few words from the medalists that's yeah, super cool uh, first indoor uh, indoor race actually i train a lot on swift but uh, first competition so uh, yeah it's pretty nice <laughs> and like, how does this compare did you change your training at all for this event no to be honest the biggest goal is uh, paralympics in tokyo so that's the main focus, but uh, we are quite a long period without any races, so it's really nice already when I come into the arena that you have that racing feeling, and that's I, risk, I miss it a lot. So that's nice, and uh, so again the preparation before a race, and uh, yeah, I really miss that. So that's nice. Ah, oh, yeah, it's pretty tough, uh, especially the treadmill. I'm not uh, not used to running on the, those sort of things, but yeah, it's definitely good fun to have. I think it's. It's set up like a standard for Super League. I think like the only way really to go is up from here. Like it'll be good to like get some proper coverage and like just yeah have a bit more of it because it is fun and it kind of puts us along with the AB guys and shows what we can do as well. So it's, it is good. Good. Hot is my word. The word for me is hot and yeah humid. But amazing though. It's so good to actually be involved in this. Um, I think it's a massive step forward for para triathlon and it'd be so good if this can continue we can have crowds and like more of our the rest yeah. of our girls here it'd be it'd be really good format to do with the able-bodied athletes ready to go and on the start line it was time to head up to the stands to sit back relax and watch the racing unfold on your heart. We're racing once again at Super League Triathlon so good to be able to put this racing on So she was 137, Lucy Charles, at the uh, 150 mark. Right, that would be probably expected. We've got Lucy and Sophie together here, which is really interesting because they may be able to work together. They can stay together on the run here and then go on to the bike. So really, really strong duo here.
coming up just about 250 metres uh, left of the run. And you can see the turnover for Beth Potter. She's keeping those knees high and making sure what we found last time is the more time your foot spends on these curved treadmills, the more power you can push through it. Nine seconds back to Colwell. Charles Barkley's overtaken Sophie Colwell now. And off those the two treadmill. Those two behind need to really work to get on their bike. Back to Beth Potter, she's going to cross the line in just a second and she's going to take the full 10 points and really lay down a marker for these women. Before you know it, you're straight back into the racing and at the front, once again, it's Beth Potter. This is very important. Get the goggles on, get the swimming cap on, and get into the water as quickly as possible for a 200 metre dash. Oh. Round two is just finished. So the girls are getting out of the pool and they are now getting on their bikes ready to go again. This is so fast and furious. But I've done a very quick calculation in my head and I think at the moment, Lucy Charles Barkley is on 18 points. She's won one and she won the last one and she was third. Then Sophie Coldwell was second and second, so she's on 18 points. And Beth Potter was first and third and she's also on 18. So those three athletes are on the same points going into the final race. points whoever wins this running race over the next 700 meters will win the arena games Beth Potter comes across the line and she will win the Super League triathlon arena games in London congratulations to Beth Potter she has right. done the job I didn't I, I thought I could do quite well but yeah like all that hype and social media this week I was like oh god like obviously Sophie and Lucy are really good swimmers so and I'm like it's something I've been working on it's a work in progress my swimming so yeah to be to be close to them I was I was super happy with that yeah I mean I, I didn't really have a clue what was gonna happen to be honest but I know how strong of a bike runner Beth is so and a swimmer as well she's a great swimmer so she kind of doesn't have a weakness and then on that first round seeing how she was running I knew by the third round it was definitely gonna come down to that run and it was gonna be really hard to hold her off my goodness, that was an action-packed women's race. I can't wait to see what the men's race has in store for us. And it's gonna be some fast and furious racing. Let's get racing here at the Arena Games. So, out of the pool we go. There's nothing between the top three.
Slaggy knows he's going to be in a big, big fight as we set up for the second stage here. And this is where things start to get properly toasty for these athletes as they speed up. swimmer but Johnny's hit the water in front of him I think he swim over the top of Alex G and just as knee slags tri um, transition has cost him this stage takes the win. Congratulations to him, Alex Yee, Pips, Johnny Brownlee from the podium. We hope you enjoyed this one. On behalf of Chris McCormack. I've ra raced and trained on Zwift so much that I know you've got to be there and I tried and I wasn't. So then it's kind of calculating how much effort because I knew I had a race, but then the, you only get two and a half minutes roughly. So I didn't want to go too easy. I wasn't worried about the recovery. It was more that I was, I was putting as much like watts per kilo as the guys who are 30 seconds ahead of me yet they were going quicker than me because of the draft situation. Um, and that's like, Arr! but then, um, yeah, and those treadmills are actually quite slippy. The first run and the last run when we're coming out the water, I don't think everyone, the women said that as well. Um, yeah, we were running on yesterday, no good, but you were slipping with the water. Um, otherwise I'd have run much quicker. <laughs> How about Alex Yee though, man? That's awesome. Like, Well, what a long, but absolutely amazing day. And some results that, well, I wasn't actually expecting. No, it has been an incredible experience today. A big thank you to Zwift for inviting us and to Super League for putting on such a brilliant event. This could be the future of triathlon. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as us. If you have, hit that like button, give us a subscribe and follow us on social media.